Hi, my name is Steve Brown, and I'm looking forward to facilitating the workshop at the Pursuit Conference called Leading Me, Your Most Important Assignment. The workshop uh, really focuses in on a book that I wrote in 2015 called Leading Me, uh, Eight Keys to a Christian Leader's Most Important Assignment. And this video is to help you get a foundation uh, on a little bit of the background and of the book so that when we get to the workshop together we can jump in and get moving very quickly forward together. So let me give you some backdrop to Leading Me and the workshop that we'll enjoy together. Uh, Leading Me is really based around the concept of personal leadership and how important personal leadership is. If you can think about uh, organizational leadership for a moment, uh, whether it's human resources or finance or governance or strategic planning or visioneering, um, all those elements of organizational leadership are so critically important. Uh, within that big circle of organizational leadership comes a, a smaller circle inside called team leadership. And team leadership is all about uh, uh, recruiting the right people, uh, training them, aligning them, empowering them, encouraging them. And team leadership, just like organizational leadership is, is tremendously important. So within uh, organizational leadership and then team leadership is another aspect of leadership that we're going to focus on in the workshop, which is called personal leadership. And I believe that personal leadership is tremendously important in its own right, and as we lead teams and as we lead organizations. Uh, D. Hawk, who's the founder of Visa and a management consultant, wrote this. Here's the very heart and soul of the matter of leadership. If you seek to lead, invest 50% of your time and attention leading yourself, your own purpose, ethics, principles, motivation, and conduct. D. Hawk looked at organizational leadership and team leadership and said that the most important time investment needs to be put in personal leadership because if you lead yourself well that will impact and make leading teams and organizations much easier. Personal leadership is tremendously important for a number of reasons. Uh, here are just a few. Personal leadership is important because it's a strategic leverage point. You might not be the organizational leader, you might just have input. Uh, you might not be the team leader, uh, again you might have uh, input or you might not. But all of us, whatever our role, whatever our position, I believe are called to lead ourselves. And one of the, the leadership uh, keys uh, these days, I believe, is that the currency of leadership is trust. Uh, the more trust we have in a sense of a bank account of trust, uh, the easier it is to lead teams or organizations. And that bank account of trust is really dependent upon our personal leadership. If we are dependable and reliable, uh, and effective, we're going to grow trust and that trust is going to build and allow us to lead teams and other people and organizations much easier. Personal leadership is also critical because every day in the media we learn uh, and read stories about people who are capable and competent organizational leaders, skilled team leaders, who nonetheless were disqualified from leadership because they didn't lead themselves well. And not only did they uh, get disqualified from leadership, they left a wake that impacted uh, the people on their team or in their organization in significant detrimental ways. Personal leadership is also important because uh, if we're investing time and energy, needing to spend time and energy managing ourselves and our own failures and foibles, that means that we're not spending time, that same time and that same energy leading team and organization around us. So if we want to focus more energy on God's purposes and priorities, for instance, that uh, in organizational priorities, that means uh, if we can uh, recycle that time that we spend on our own stuff and cleaning up our own messes personally in our personal leadership, that will help our team and organizational leadership. So or uh, personal leadership is tremendously important and it's also very difficult. I find that I, I have organizational leadership challenges, I have team leadership challenges, but my greatest leadership challenges uh, rest with the person I look at in the mirror every morning, which is me. I find them very difficult to lead. And there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, one is we've got blind spots. We don't know what we don't know. 
and sometimes we don't have mechanisms or friends or people around us who are confident enough to speak truth to us so we know those things that we don't know. And when we don't know things, they just kind of keep uh, living themselves out in our, our life and our leadership. Uh, personal leadership is also difficult because uh, there is a battle going on inside us. Uh, Paul, uh, who wrote most of the New Testament, uh, writes in Romans chapter 7 these words, which I'm sure we can all relate to. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. He goes on and says, For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Paul goes on, uh, verse 23, But I see another law at work within me, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner to the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that's subject to death? If Paul's writing that and struggling with his personal leadership, what's going on inside him, there's this battle going on inside him, then that means that you and I likely have very similar battles working within us. And that's one of the reasons why personal leadership is so difficult. There's not only a battle going on inside us, there's also a battle going on around us externally. 1 Peter 5.8 talks about uh, the roaring lion uh, who's prowling around looking for someone to devour. Now, we don't want to be paranoid about the spiritual battle going on, but we also don't want to be naive about it. We want to uh, be alert and be aware. And there is very much this external battle going on that would uh, like uh, nothing more than to mess up our personal leadership because the ripple effect of that, the collateral damage that comes from our personal leadership unfolding negatively is significant. As Christian leaders, I believe that we are strategic targets for the evil one. Take out a Christian leader and the collateral damage is significant. So not only is there this battle going on inside us, but there's also an external battle going on as well. Personal leadership is critical for many reasons. It's also uh, tremendously difficult. Uh, and a couple of things that I want to just frame our time with uh, is around the partnership of us working with God in partnership because personal leadership might sound like it's just about us. We're on our own. Uh, pull up your socks and try harder. That's not what I'm advocating at all. Uh, we have a role to play. Uh, 1, Peter 4, or 1 Timothy 4.7 uh, says, Train yourself to be godly. And Paul was telling Timothy, train yourself. You have a, an important role to play here, Timothy. And that role is to train, to be intentional and systematic in your development with the outcome of godliness. Train yourself to be godly. But that uh, responsibility isn't in isolation or uh, separate from God. Uh, in John 15, 5, uh, Jesus says, um, If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So we are to train ourselves to be godly, but we need to do that in the context and part, a partnership with God. Uh, for, for apart from him, we can do nothing. First, uh, uh, sorry, Philippians 2, 12 and 13 uh, give this a very good connection. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, that's a role that we have to play. But verse 13 gives the other half of the role that we play, and that's God's role. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Uh, John Townsend and Henry Cloud write about this in How People Grow. And here's what they say. We do not grow because of willpower or self-effort, but because of God's provision. God offers the help we need, that's grace, and then we have to respond to that provision. There's this partnership between God and us that's really critical and foundational for leading ourselves for personal leadership. The second aspect of uh, the framework that I'd like to add is, is beyond the partnership to uh, the words uh, stewardship and shalom. Uh, as Christian leaders, we know about stewardship. We know that we are stewards of the resources and the time and the energy God has entrusted to us. And we're called to be, on behalf of our organizations, good stewards. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4.2 says, It is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. All of us want to be faithful with the trust that's been given to us. 
Matthew 25:21, uh, those words, uh, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. All of us want to hear those words, good and uh, well done, good and faithful servant. And recognizing that if we're a good steward of, of a few things, there'll be more given to us to be stewards over. Uh, many Christian leaders, all, almost all the Christian leaders I work with, want to be good stewards. Uh, they are focused uh, day and night on stewardship because it, they know, one, it pleases God, but it also impacts many, many people that are, their organizations serve. Stewardship, let's leave it for a moment and go to that other word, shalom. That beautiful blessing in Numbers chapter 6, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Translated the word is shalom. And that word shalom is a rich, rich word. Uh, Shalom means complete, perfect, full, wholeness, peace, well-being, right relationship, safety, soundness, tranquility, prosperity, fullness, rest, harmony, and absence of discord. That word shalom is rich with meaning. And many of the Christian leaders I work with uh, struggle when they hear how beautiful uh, shalom sounds. Uh, They desire it, but they're not experiencing it. And they take those two words, stewardship and shalom, and they recognize that stewardship has become so much of a priority uh, that it's consumed them in a way that they're not experiencing shalom anymore. And what's happened is stewardship uh, has become stewardship uh, rather than shalom or stewardship or shalom. It's this choice they feel they need to make when in fact God has uh, established both stewardship as part of our design and his call and shalom as part of our design and call as well. It's supposed to be stewardship and shalom, not a choice between the two. And the book leading me and our workshop is going to head this direction is how do you live out stewardship and shalom it starts with leading yourself and then i'm going to share in the book and some of these in our workshop eight key practices for christian leaders to actually live out stewardship while experiencing shalom so that's the heart of our workshop Uh, that's the heart of the book leading me and i look very forward to spending time with you uh, at the conference and the workshop see you soon